Hi everyone, Paul here. So uh, today I'll be sharing my top, let's say, lessons and learnings um, after 50 plus Salesforce projects. Okay, so um, in a nutshell, I've been working on Salesforce since 2012 throughout different uh, geographies, so North America, LATAM, EMEA, APAC, okay, and throughout all of these years I've worked on Martin Cloud, Pardot, Sales Cloud, uh, Service Cloud, I've worked with MuleSoft, Heroku, so with all of that and taking all geographies and the amazing number of projects, I would say, what is it that I've learned? What are my top learnings, my lessons, I would say, okay? So that's my objective of today, so I'm going to be sharing to you in a golden platter or a silver platter to you, okay, so that you can actually, uh, let's say, be more successful or have a higher chance of being uh, successful okay with that said let's start with the very beginning that is what are the challenges okay so uh, some people maybe are not aware but yeah CRM and projects around CRM have a very very high rate of, of not uh, being successful or the potential to fail okay so we are talking about 20 to 70 percent of the CRM projects actually fail okay and this according to Gartner or Forrester research as well among others okay so so the topic is why does this happen what's in for you uh, how to prevent that this can actually happen and what's the solution okay so those are some of the key points that I'm going to be covering and even more take into consideration that you can have uh, CRM projects that actually have a cost of 30,000 up to 100,000, 100K, up to 1 million, or even more than that, okay? So it's a lot of money, and it's important to make sure that you understand why do they actually fail, and how is it that you can actually make it a success, okay? So this is what I'm looking to do today, okay, to share with you what are my key learnings out of this 50-plus Salesforce projects across those different geographies and just give it to you in a golden platter. Okay, that's it. Okay, so let me see if I'm successful on my mission. Okay, so to start from, um, so the key point is how to overcome this. Okay, there are a few key points that I've learned, okay, working on Salesforce for so long now. Okay, so first and foremost, you should think customer business and adoption first. What is it that this means? So with regards to customer, I think it's self-explanatory as on the case of the business. So business, you need to be close to the business to understand what is it that business actually wants, let's say. And then talking adoption is to make sure that if you build something, if you implement something, a project, okay, that that is actually being used, okay? So you need to make sure that that is key, okay? If you don't, uh, then the higher is the probability of you actually failing, okay? So the other key point that I would say is to define success metrics. You need to be able to measure your success and showcase all of that, okay? Then uh, the last point that I would say before going even deeper is you need to have a strong delivery approach, okay? And on this one, you have several topics that I'm going to try to uh, touch. So first and foremost, you need to have a very clear business goals, okay? You have to have a comprehensive, let's say, implementation plan, okay? And I'll give you that in a sec. You need to take into consideration all cost considerations. You need to have, um, meaning, um, top, let's say, I would, I would say, top uh, sponsorship, okay, so exec sponsorship, but I will give you that in a second. But outside of that, I think it's important for you to select what will be the right uh, Salesforce project approach, okay? So you can have three, okay? So the three that you can actually look at are the in-house, in-house between brackets, okay? Are the third party or AKA consultancy, SI partners, a partner of implementation, or you can actually have an hybrid approach, okay? So it's a mix between in-house and actually working with, um, let's say, this external partner, okay? So I'm gonna be sharing my own experience. So I already covered uh, all of them, I would say. So I did work with in-house, okay? I did work on hybrid uh, situations, okay? Like for instance, when I was working at Glovo was an example of that. 
or um, I did work effectively on Canon like that as well. But the other points will be that I actually work on the implementation uh, partner side. Okay, actually implementing what needs to be done. Okay, so today I'm going to try to uh, give you what are the benefits and also what could be the potential challenges. Okay, so very quick. So challenges if you're going to go into an in-house approach. So. First and foremost, most of the people don't have the experience, okay? They have a lack of experience in terms of projects. So while this can actually work as a boost, let's put it like that, for those that actually are avid, are eager to learn more, this actually can be a massive drawback, okay? Then the other point is around project management, okay? Most uh, in-house people don't know how to avoid scope creep, okay, as an example. So that means that your project tends to go completely out of proportion, becoming extremely late. Then there is another key point. There is the lack of understanding in terms of architecture, integration, data quality is always or maybe is always an afterthought, okay, and that will eat you alive, okay, believe me, okay, because whenever you start to use the solution, it doesn't work okay and then that is when the everything goes to uh yeah you know what okay so benefits uh there are some benefits for a in-house i'd say uh upfront costs are lower okay um once more if you have the correct people with the correct mindset this will motivate your team to learn a lot about salesforce mostly on a quicker way okay so uh, I've done that when I was actually working at Revu in the UK. Okay, so third party consultancy. Uh, what are a bit of the drawbacks? So you have higher upfront costs. Okay, that is a given. Okay, but you also have another thing that you need to take into consideration. Choose a partner that gives you the proper advice. Okay, that it works much more an advisory uh, partner, let's say, uh, and not as much just as someone that is looking to implement something and continue to upsell to you something that actually at the end you don't need. Okay. So that is a, a big thing for you to, uh, pay attention to. Some of them are looking to extend the dependency and get more and more work. Okay. So be mindful of that. It's important. Okay. So then the other key point, um, around this, is effectively that if you are working with a third party, you're going to have much more experience on board from the get go. You're going to have people that have um, a different level of experience in terms of projects like myself. So, for instance, I work on 50 plus Salesforce projects. So for me, it's easier, let's say, if I would be starting from the from the scratch. OK, then the other key point will be that um, if you are working with uh, consultancy, they can leverage past experiences, they can and they will have access to different profiles, okay, from consultants, from project managers, from architects, from developers, uh, etc. and so forth, okay. Look at, um, effectively, another key point will be look at consultants or consultancies that are, have uh, industry or domain knowledge, okay, that will facilitate things. Then, last but not least, hybrid, okay. There, there are pros and cons, okay. On the on the positive side, it's more flexible in the sense that you can bring implementation to support the in-house team, okay. Uh, most likely, it's less expensive as you would go completely into a third party. Uh, but it can be also slower. It depends a bit on it. how is it that you're going to be splitting the efforts across the in-house team and across the, the, the third party. So there needs to be a very strong, uh, let's say, project management and delivery lead approach on this specific point. Some cons. Uh, it will require for sure some additional work and, and coordination, as I mentioned to you. And as, as mentioned as well, can be a bit tricky to yeah, take a decision on who should be taking what, okay? Then, last but not least, I would say that you need to choose the right KPIs, okay? You need to have really, really uh, a sense of having a strong and robust change management strategy because people don't like change, meaning you need to put that on your implementation and delivery approach as a must-have point, okay? Then, last but not least, you need to uh, be mindful of user adoption. That is another key point, okay? And with that, I will wrap up this first part, let's say, of, of this uh, uh, 
top, let's say, best lessons that I could eventually share with you guys, because this will have a second part. Uh, and on that second part, I'm going to be sharing even more in-depth uh, topics and on this case specific learnings let's say from specific projects okay with that said that's it guys hopefully this was a good one if you have any questions or concerns with regards to your uh, approach in terms of, of implementation if you're going to be going into a project you want to have some tips okay please feel free to reach out to me nevertheless regardless if you are starting from scratch if you already have some experience or if you are more of a senior guy Okay, with that said, that's it guys. Enjoy your day. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.